Hello again, everybody. I'm Gary Glenn, and this is Hall County Sports. A lot of ground to cover in this particular show, and we open with basketball. North Hall's Mary Kate Rustin joins Sister McKinnon, the Thousand Point Club, and the Lady Trojans' 55-46 win over Chastity the other night. She only needed two to hit 1,001 for her career. That's what she got on the night. <laughs> two points. McKenna had 21 on the night. Ali Staub hit seven of her 13 in the last two minutes, and that turned out to be big. Taylor Swazowski had 10 assists, seven steals, and seven points. Emily Crane scored 15 for Chester T. Trojan boys made it a sweep on the night, 60-46, to 46, led by Ebo and Preston Smith. Ebo hit a three and scored six more straight and finished with 18 points. Cole Morgan had 20 for Chester T. Davia Sykes had 23 and Kara Chilton 22 as the Lady Falcons then edged the North Hall girls 65-62 in overtime. Trojan boys prevented the sweep 63-45. Adam Kelly with 16 in the win. Avery Kago 14 and Smith had 12 more. And that is Ebo Smith. Jamad Stevens and Jaleel Bailey had 15 each for the branch earlier. The Brants girls had beaten Madison County 42-40. Tavia Sykes leading the Lady Falcons on that night with 20 points. We bring to the show now Coach Christy House, head coach of the North Hall Lady Trojans. And, Christy, you're playing pretty well. I mean, the losses that you've had, only five to this point in the season, have all been pretty close, haven't they? They have. We've, you know, tried to go out and compete every night. We've been in there, you know, in the tough overtime loss to Flowery Branch on Saturday was a great basketball game, you know, so we're learning and getting in those situations. Hopefully it'll help us down the road. Now, I saw you in Lanierland, and of course that was a game that you led a great part of the night and kind of let it slip away from it. it I know that you've got some senior leadership. It, it, there, has there been a lull? I mean, you seem to be playing pretty, pretty well for most of the game, and then there's a little bit of a lull that right. kind of let the other folks get back into it. Have you seen that pattern? We have, and hopefully, you know, the way we played this weekend, hopefully we're getting over a little bit of that and getting in a rhythm, playing some games in a row. Because after that Lanier Land loss, we're up 10 at halftime. And then Morgan Jackson comes out from East Hall. She's lights out, you know, just kind of takes the game over, knocked us back a little bit. But we're, you know, making progress. So hopefully we'll see fewer of those lulls. <laughs> Morgan Jackson does that to a lot of people, she does. apparently. <laughs> she does. Uh, now, the Rushton sisters, it must be, uh, I know that they're great athletes all the way around. I'm, you know, follow their volleyball career, all that. Uh, Mary Kate and McKenna. Uh, how unusual is it to have 2,000 point scores on the same basketball team? It seems very unusual. You know, we've been, this season, we've been a part of four games that had a 1,000 point score, but all from different, you know, the other two yeah. from different places. But for us to have two in the same, you know, week or two span was really special for us. Now, you've got a, a, a series of region games coming up now, right? We do. It's, it's pretty big. It is. We have Lumpkin tomorrow, then White on Friday, and then we'll have Franklin next Tuesday. So three in a row. Um, now's the time. you got to be playing good in January. Well, that's right. It's sort of the preseason is sort of over right, now. Right, huh? right. Everyone counts, and you have to show up every day, so we're ready. Who is the competition? Who, who's the best in the league so far? I mean, I know that you're going to be in the thick Right, and obviously, you know, Chess T, great basketball game on Friday night. They, they bring it. They play well every night. Franklin, you know, historically very good. Oconee County, we played them once in the preseason. They're on the other side, but that was a one-point basketball game on the buzzer, you know, so another tough game. A lot of good teams in our region. What do you like most about your team this year? I uh, like most, I guess, is just the seniors that we've been with so long, the special bond that we, the coaches have with them, that they have with each other. Um, I really like their leadership and trying to bring our younger kids along because we have some young kids that are going to be pretty good, and so they're kind of taking them under their wing, and, you know, that's a special thing to see. Is that going to be one of the keys down the stretch? It maybe is. These kids to get up there to, for you to maybe contend for a region championship, make a run in the playoffs? It definitely is. And um, over the past couple of weeks, we've had people other than our seniors who've stepped up down the stretch. Allie Staub stepped up big for us the other night in the fourth quarter. And in that Oconee game, it was a freshman that hit the game winner, you know, on the buzzer. So Sydney Cleveland, she's a very good player. She's a freshman getting experience. So we definitely need everybody down the stretch. Christy, thanks for coming in. Okay, thank you. Good luck to Appreciate the Lady it. Trojans. That's the way. Coach okay. Christy House, thank head you. coach of the North Hall Lady Trojan basketball team. In other high school hoops from last week, Flower Branch's boys rebounded from some tough losses with a 53-43 win over West Forsyth. Nick Wayne scored seven first quarter points for Flower Branch and finished with 13 to lead the Falcons, who also won the girls' game 50-41. Marissa Ivey hit four three-point shots and finished with 14 points. J.C. Ramey had six points, nine rebounds, four assists, a block shot, and a number of deflected passes, while Sykes had 11 points, five rebounds, and five assists for the Lady Falcons, who are playing pretty well. Lanierland, most valuable player, Shaquan Cantrell, led Gainesville with 18 points and six rebounds as the Elephants beat West Hall 
65-57. A.J. Stevens had 19 to lead the Spartans. Gainesville girls early in the evening had beaten West Hall 42-32. Rebecca Webster had 9 to lead GHS. Cantrell had 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 steals as Gainesville dispatched Oconee County 75-42. And Gainesville's girls last week beat Walnut Grove 36-28 as Webster scored 12. Lakeview Academy swept Tallulah Falls, 57-33 girls and 75-12 boys. Only Abraham and Taylor Handed led the Lady Lions with 13 points apiece. Austin Pearson led the Mayo members of the Pride with a career-high 29 points and Coach Seth Vining's 1,000th career game. The North Georgia Christian girls got 15 points and 20 rebounds from Julianne Sutton in a 37-34 win against Cumberland Christian Academy in Marietta. North Georgia Christian then swept Holy Ground Christian, 37-21 girls and 67-12 boys. Nicole Ball led the Lady Chargers with 14, while the NGC boys were led by a dozen each from Tristan Diepenbrock and Sam Munchen. West Hall swept Johnson, 47-27 girls, 59-58 boys. Rico Jones led the Spartans with 16 points. Dizwan Cantrell had 15 points, and Stevens finished with 11 points for the Spartans. Kaylin Geddes led the Lady Spartans with 15 points and 5 rebounds while Lindsey Pethel had 11 for the ladies of Johnson, Ty Odom leading the male Knights that night with 17. Johnson's girls then bounced back with a 71-33 win over Monroe area. Pethel had a monster game with a career-best 31 points and 9 rebounds. Toya Randolph had a different sort of double-double, 13 points and 13 assists as the Lady Knights picked up their second win of the season. Lady Spartans beat Lanier 44-41 last week as Haley Haynes made two shots, the only two she made. A couple of three-pointers to tie and then win the game. Brooke Reed had most of her team leading 17 points in the fourth quarter. West All Boys made it a sweep, 59-47. Stevens scored a game-high 19 points to pace the Spartans, and Jones added 16 more. Now let's go to college basketball. After leading the Lady Saints to a pair of wins last week, sophomore forward Jamie Carnes was named the Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week as well as the Moe's Southwest Grill North Georgia Athlete of the Week. It's the second time in the first five weeks that Jamie has earned the conference honor. She's also the first player to win the award multiple times this season. Garns led the Lady Saints to a perfect 2-0 record last week as she poured in 34 points and grabbed 12 boards against Reinhardt in the final game of an eight-game homestand to open the season. Against the Eagles, she made 11 of her 20 field goal attempts and knocked down 10 of her 12 free throws. Gainesville High alumnus followed up the Reinhardt game with another 30-point performance and a come-from-behind 73-70 overtime victory over Newberry. For the week... Carnes averaged, averaged 36 and a half points a game and 13 rebounds while scoring exactly 50% of North Georgia's points and shooting 57% from the field. Uh, even in a 72-44 loss to number five ranked Clayton State, Jamie continued to shine, registering her ninth double-double in 10 games, her third straight. And she scored 23 points and pulled down 12 rebounds on 9 of 13 shooting from the field. Lady Saints bounced back from that tough loss to Clayton State by defeating Augusta State 57-45. Offensively, North Georgia again led by Carnes, who registered her nation-best 10th double-double of the year, scoring a game-high 21 points, pulling down 11 boards, and swatting six shots. Wow, what a year she's having for the Lady Saints. Congratulations to Jamie. We're back on the happy trails when Hall County Sports continues. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting. And a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905. Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. Locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com.
We're back. I'm Gary Glenn. This is Hall County Sports. In this particular segment, we break away from all of this this wintertime stuff of basketball and wrestling and things that are going on, and we kind of go to a, a fall sport. Well, sort of. The meet was back in December, but we bring to the show now Luis Gonzalez from the North Hall cross-country team. We had him on back in the fall. Some of you may remember when they had the Trojans come on as a, some of your other folks came on with you, Luis, as this was after you finished second in the state as a team by a single point to St. Pius, and you were fourth overall. Yes, sir. Now, this is a USATF, USA Track and Field, yes, national championship in the Junior Olympics in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's correct. How'd you do? Well, uh, I finished second place overall in my, uh, you know, respective age group. Right. So, um, just barely missing first place by less than a second. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much all there was to well, it. Well, <laughs> second, second in the nation, that's pretty good. Now, uh, did you run a pretty good time? Yes, sir. It's my fastest time that I've ever ran um, in, in all of my time of running. Of running. Uh, it was a time of 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Wow. So you broke 16. Had, had you ever broken 16 before? Never before, sir. And so you broke it by 15 seconds. Yes, sir. Why? I mean, is it your, your, your training just go that well since the, since the state meet back in uh, the, this past fall? Well, um, I'd say training was all the, I mean, it was just the same, you know, just off-season training. Um, but um, I, uh, my strategy, my strategy for the race, for uh, just pacing myself throughout the race was a lot different than, say, state or region uh, back during the school season. But um, uh, like I said, it was different, and uh, it really helped me because, um, I mean, I personally didn't know I could run that fast until <laughs> that day. <laughs> so. so so you surprised yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so what was your strategy and how did it differ? Well, usually my strategy would be to, you know, get out fast, uh, not to get caught in the pack. Um, but uh, this race, I, I decided, well, with a little help of uh, my coach, Art DaCosta, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he like gave me some, some advice and he told me, you know, just stay back, you know, save some of that energy for the, for the last couple miles. And so I did um, my first mile. I, I don't remember exactly what the time was, but it was slower than what I what I usually run. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I, f I mean, I, he they pulled through. I mean, I had uh, more energy throughout the the third mile, and that that really kept me going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. so less than a second, you finished behind a guy from Louisiana. Yes, sir. Was there actually less pressure on you at this kind of a meet? I mean, I know it's a national stage and so forth, but you're not really running for your team per That's se. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, I mean, like you said, it's not it's not much of a team thing, but I mean, I did have another uh, friend of mine running that was running for the same uh, team, which was Lanier Running Club. Right, right. And uh, we we didn't we we weren't considered a team because we we had less than uh, five runners in that age group. So, I mean, it was it was still it was still uh, it still felt like any other race. You know, had to had to go had to go hard, and you know, run run for the win. Now, does this finish on a national stage, though, Lewis? Does this, this help you get ready for the spring track season now where you'll be running distances for, for North Hall? Oh, uh, yes, sir, definitely. Um, you know, it didn't really set in until afterwards that I finished second in the nation yeah. that, that high up, but um, that really gave me a lot of, uh, you know, encouragement to, like, to keep on training and trying to just get faster. So. What's it look like for you this spring season, not, only, not just you but your team? Well, um, the team... Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a pretty good team. Uh, our short distance isn't isn't uh, the best in the right. state, so um, but we always suffer there every year. Um, although we are gonna miss, uh, or we we might just miss uh, one of our one of our best, I'd say best uh, two milers. His name is Brandon Lawson. Mm -hmm. uh, due to um, I don't know maybe personal reasons he he might not be able to run this season so that's going to be a, a backset for us okay well how about you what's your goal well i uh i plan to run in the 800 and maybe break two minutes uh maybe i don't know go for the state title okay so, uh, so but not not the long races not the the 1600 or the 3200 yeah uh uh my coach wants me wants me to run the 1600 and i've, I've i have zero experience in that i probably ran it once or twice back in middle school but other than that you know, it's, it's going to be a new thing for me. All right. Well, whatever you do, Luis, good luck to you. Right. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Congratulations. Thank Luis you. Gonzalez, second in the nation, which is a pretty good thing. We take you to the mat when we return. 
This program is also brought to you by Long Street Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Long Street's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet him for a hearty meal at Long Street Cafe, where they put the home in the cooking. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And I was thinking this morning about how complicated life is. We have a lot of choices to make in life and not a whole lot of guidelines to do it sometimes. It's like being a parent. You know, I'd hoped when I was a parent that our kids would come into the world with uh, their instructions printed on their bottom, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And parenting is so much guesswork. I'm amazed that we hear so many people talk on TV and we can go into the bookstores and see the books and the folks on TVs that, that have all the answers, but you and I know that they don't have all the answers. And the answers aren't as simple as they tell us sometimes, that all you have to do is smile just right or say this thing or feed your children this and everything will be all right. You know, Jesus gathered with his followers after he was raised from the dead on a mountain in Galilee. And in Matthew 28, it tells us in verse 17 that even then some doubted. And I think that's interesting that the church was formed with some doubt in it. We don't have all the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all of them. And if you'd like to be part of a community that doesn't have all the answers, but they can help you be at peace with the questions, well, then we invite you to join us at McEver Road. We invite you to come by and visit us at one of our worship services. Won't you come and see? We're back. I'm Gary Glenn, and this is Hall County Sports. We turn to wrestling for this particular segment. You can add the term of area champions to the accolades of this year's North Hall Trojan wrestling team. They beat Chastity, the team we featured last week, head-to-head -to, -head to earn a trip to the state duels in Macon. Alan Cattleman sealed the deal for North Hall with a pin at 182. He, Cam Howell at 220 and 285, Tyler Goss at 120, and Andy Voss, who wrestled 132 and 138, each won all three matches they wrestled for North Hall, who also beat Gaines in Loconi County before knocking off the War Eagles, who then had to bounce back and beat White County to also earn a trip to the state duels. That's a goal for the team. Chastity also had beaten Franklin County and Lumpkin County. Jose Reyes, Austin Donaldson, Christian Zapatero, Taylor Wright, and Bart Velasquez led the War Eagles to the state duels for the first time in that school's history. The last time Norrell Hall won the area was in 2001, and coaching that team, present Chesity coach, Gary Whitlow. So he goes back with two different teams. We bring to the show now Coach Richie Vickers, the head coach of the Johnson Knights. And Richie, uh, first of all, tell me a little bit about the makeup of the Johnson wrestling team. You guys had a tough area down there. We do have a tough area. We've got uh, two teams in Chesty and North Hall that will represent us that are very, very good, very tough. Uh, as far as Johnson goes, we're, we're very young. We've got two seniors on the team. Uh, neither one of them have wrestled longer than two years, so we're very, very young. Uh, this is I'm going into my fourth year coaching at Johnson, and uh, we have a group of kids that are sophomores this year that have been wrestling for us since they were in seventh grade, and uh, they're going to be the big turning point for Johnson. They're very competitive already on the varsity level, and uh, we're just hoping we keep picking it up from there. As you mentioned, fourth year at Johnson with the Knights. How have you seen the quality of wrestling rise in Hall County over your term? Uh, just over the past four years, we've gone from having one, maybe two or three teams that are very competitive on the state level to now we have uh, four or five of them that are really competitive on the state level. Flowery Branch, uh, North Hall, Chesty, West Hall, all really quality teams that uh, can, can bang with the best of them. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we, we just didn't see in the past, right? Right. We've got a number of, quite, uh, of individual wrestlers who are also pretty good, aren't they? Absolutely. Lots of individual wrestlers that are really good. Flowery Branch usually pumps out three or four just from their team. West Hall always has one or two that you know are going to compete for a state medal. And uh, North Hall and Chesity, they, they just keep managing to pull them up, pull them up. <laughs> Who's been doing it for you this year? Who are your best wrestlers so far? Uh, probably off the top of my head, some of our best wrestlers this year. Uh, uh, Tommy Look, he's been wrestling 126 for us, and he just moved down to the 120 weight class. He's a sophomore. He's really tough. He's been wrestling since he was in seventh grade. Uh, we've also got... Uh, Chippy Garcia, who's really competitive. He's one of our unorthodox wrestlers. He'll, he does all kinds of scrambling. Uh, we've also got uh, some of the bigger guys. Uh, Uriel Ramirez, if we can keep him healthy, he's, he does pretty well. He's also a sophomore, been wrestling since seventh grade. And uh, 
we're like I said, we're just really young. And one of the keys, Richie, is to get them when they're young and, and coach them up and, and keep them keep them out and keep them healthy. Absolutely. We our our goal is to eventually have a kids program that'll feed our middle school, that'll feed our high school. But right now, both uh, myself and Coach Berenson coach the middle school team and the high school team. So we really try to keep them involved all together. Well, that's tough on you, but it's continuity-wise, it's pretty good. It's very good because they start learning the same things from the very beginning when they get to us, and they, they become really bonded by the time they're in high school. Well, we throw Flowery Branch into the mix for the Hall County Duels coming up later this month, don't oh, we? But that, that's going to be something, huh? Oh, man. Hall County should be very exciting this uh, coming up the 27th and 28th at Johnson, and uh, I, I'm expecting very big matches between North Hall, Chesapeake, Flowery Branch, West Hall, it's always exciting, but each year it's getting better and better, and they're nail biters. All right, Richie. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you, and good luck to the Knights with the, the wrestling program for the rest of this year and in the future. Okay? Thank you, sir. A couple of other wrestling notes before we leave this particular segment. It's going to be alumni night at Chester T on January the 16th. Grads will get in free that night, starting around 5, 5.30. Gainesville will be providing the opposition. Now, prior to their respective area duels, East Hall beat Johnson 56-26, getting pins from Robert Williams at 126 pounds, Felton Wood at 132, Enrique Restrepo at 138, Edward Vergara at 145, Carlos Negron at 152, Jared Rogers at 170, and Contavious Johnson at 182. Now at the AA area duels over in Jefferson, the Vikings went 2-1 and one in the Friday round before falling to eventual fourth place finisher Jackson County on Saturday. Perennial champion Jefferson won the area again with Elbert County second. In 8-4A at the area duels being held at Clark Central, Flowery Branch made it to the semifinal round where they lost to the host school, the eventual second place Clark Central Gladiators. Loganville won the meet, Rockdale County was third, and Flowery Branch was fourth. I'm back to wrap it up when Hall County Sports concludes. Proper maintenance is vital to the life of your car. Let the experts at Mountain View Auto Repair take care of all your vehicle needs. Owner Danny Hammock has over 50 years of experience in the automotive business and has earned a reputation of being honest and fair with his customers. We try to treat everybody like I want to be treated. You know, that works out pretty good. And uh, try to keep a price as low as possible to keep people coming in and give them a good price for their money. We do whatever turns up on a car, any kind of work, any kind of car, just uh, it don't really matter. We do it all. People say, when are you going to quit and retire? I say, oh, probably never. You know, as long as the Lord let me work, I'll probably be here working. I've been trading with Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair for about 20 years. I've always been very happy with his work. It's very easy for me to talk with him. He doesn't talk down to me. He explains it in a manner that I can understand. Most of my customers are like friends here. You know, I've known them so long, and I count them as, most all of them as friends to me. Remember, when you want honest, reliable service, put Mountain View Auto Repair under your hood. Finally, a real gym in town for everybody. From folks just wanting to get in shape to world-class powerlifters and bodybuilders, Iron Beast Barbell features elite trainers from MMA, strongman, general fitness and weight loss, to cross training, sports specific, wrestling, even professional sports massage and wellness. Iron Beast Barbell, a 12,000 square foot facility with 24-7 access and no contracts. Home of the national champion Georgia Iron Dogs and national level bodybuilder Cheryl Cook. Loaded Gym of the Month by Bodybuilding.com. Iron Beast Barbell, located in the Gainesville Market Center behind Arby's and Chick-fil-A, 622 Shallowford Road, Gainesville. Hall County Sports is brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals and remember when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair, a full service shop for all of your automotive needs. Call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair at 770-535-7278. And by McKeever Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McKeever Road in Oakwood with three worship services every Sunday morning, Kidstown and adult small groups. McKeever Road United Methodist Church is dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Gary Glenn. This is Hall County Sports. We start our wrap-up with swimming. The Flowery Branch boys and girls swimming teams battled to a combined number one finish this past Saturday in the Region 8 Quad A Championship as the Falcon boys won and the girls finished second overall. Boys got seven first and the girls three gold medals. Zach Miller-Hogg and Robbie Mix each had a couple of first place finishes each for Flowery Branch. 
Miller Hogg won the 100-yard freestyle and 200 free. Will Mix won the 100 butterfly and 200 individual medley. Mark Fall also claimed first in the 500 free. Flower Branch Boys 400 free relay team also claimed gold, and the 200 medley relay team won as well. The Lady Falcons picked up victories in the 400 free relay and the 50 free with Alex Miller and 200 individual medley through Bethany Wicker. Okay, time now to name our Athletes of the Week for the males. Well, we're going to go with Alan Kettleman, North Hall Wrestling. He won all of his matches at the area duels, including the clinching match that won the area for the Trojans, and he did it with a pin to send them to their first state duels since 2001. Honorable mention to the Flowery Branch Swimmers who won region titles, Zach Miller-Hogg and Robbie Mix. And for the females, well, we're going to go with the Flowery Branch Swimmers. Alex Miller and Bethany Wicker, region champs, is our co-female athletes of the week. Honorable mention to Johnson Basketball's leading scorer from last week, Lindsey Pethel. Okay, a couple of other notes for you. The Chesty Varsity Boys and Girls Soccer Teams were awarded the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Team Academic Award for 2011, the eighth straight time for the boys and seventh straight for the girls. It is presented to high school teams that have a composite team grade point average of 3.25 or higher for the academic playing season. And finally, once again, HCS-TV was invited to the North Hall Football Banquet, which was held this past week in the Banquet Hall of First Baptist Church in Gainesville. They handed out all their awards, including the helmets and the swords and also the special awards. Derek Satterfield getting the dedication award. Eric Garner got the Chris Wilsden Ironman Award for being on all of those teams. Alan Cattleman picked up the academic award, and while Justin Jones got the pride of the Trojan plaque, the Jim Jewelry Watch for MVP went to all-region and second-team all-state running back Imani Cross, who's headed for Tennessee. You know, he also played a lot of defense for the Trojans this year. He, Cam Howell, and Wade Phillips also selected as the overall team captains. That's our show for this week. I'm Gary Glenn. Join us next week right here for more Hall County Sports. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And I was thinking this morning about how complicated life is. We have a lot of choices to make in life and not a whole lot of guidelines to do it sometimes. It's like being a parent. You know, I'd hoped when I was a parent that our kids would come into the world with uh, their instructions printed on their bottom, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And parenting is so much guesswork. I'm amazed that we here, so many people talk on TV and we can go into the bookstores and see the books and the folks on TVs that, that have all the answers, but you and I know that they don't have all the answers. And the answers aren't as simple as they tell us sometimes, that all you have to do is smile just right or say this thing or feed your children this and everything will be all right. You know, Jesus gathered with his followers after he was raised from the dead on a mountain in Galilee. And in Matthew 28, it tells us in verse 17 that even then some doubted. And I think that's interesting that the church was formed with some doubt in it. We don't have all the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all of them. And if you'd like to be part of a community that doesn't have all the answers, but they can help you be at peace with the questions, well, then we invite you to join us at McEver Road. We invite you to come by and visit us at one of our worship services. Won't you come and see?